Witnesses say they saw a car come from this road, cross this street, and ram right into that building. Fall River Mayor Jason Correa says he is not stepping down this after he pleaded not guilty to an additional set of federal charges. Now an update to a story that was breaking on Eyewitness News this morning. Columbia gas crews are now working to figure out the source of a major gas leak in Lawrence. They're focusing on a manhole at this intersection. A couple of Canadian firefighters were ordering pizza, but they say it was one letter that caused a 2,000 mile mistake. Presidential candidates are flocking to New Hampshire, hoping to solidify their spot on the national stage by connecting with voters right here in the Grand State. And Hostess is weighing in on this. They say that the average lifespan of a Twinkie is about 65 days. That's not stopping that school, though. They are planning to keep this on permanent display for students to enjoy for generations to come. Well, this just puts a whole new definition to the term sword fight. A main man is right now in a legal battle over an antique sword owned by a former president. There is a GoFundMe that's already raised $12,000. It'll go to the family and cancer research. They're hoping to raise $25,000. As for what's next, there will be a community meeting at the Renaissance Church on Broad Street. People will learn more about the closure then. That'll be from 6 to 7. From the control room, I'm Kate Wilkinson, Eyewitness News. This was the first Saturday session in decades for the UK Parliament, all coming out to a decision to delay Brexit once again. A million demonstrators strong. From Trafalgar Square to Parliament, the streets of London were filled with demonstrators, many speaking out against Prime Minister Boris Johnson. His deal to leave the European Union was just put out on Thursday. How can they decide on something which is going to affect our children and grandchildren's futures for generations ahead in, in 48 hours? It's ridiculous. Inside the House of Parliament. Order! Heated exchanges. That is why it is now so urgent for us to move on and to build a new relationship with our friends in the EU. It's all leading up to a vote on a controversial amendment to put off approving Johnson's Brexit deal. The eyes to the right, 322. The nose to the left, 306. Back outside. We don't want to break up of our union. We want to stay in Europe. We want to stay aligned. It's good for us. And we need to stay and we demand another vote. And that's why we're here. That sentiment was not shared by all yesterday. Bye -bye. Coming out in favor of the 2016 referendum that kicked off the Brexit debate. I want a clean break. I want a fully independent, sovereign United Kingdom. Now, all of this comes with yet another deadline looming. That's at the end of the month. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, though, is expected to ask for an extension. From the control room, I'm Kate Wilkinson, Eyewitness News. The nation is waking up this morning to some tragic news out of Dayton, Ohio. Another mass shooting in just 24 hours. There was the first one in El Paso, but let's tell you what we know so far about what happened in Dayton. Right now, nine people are dead, 16 people injured. Police in Dayton, Ohio tells they have shot and killed the suspect. The shooter fired multiple rounds with a long gun outside a bar around one this morning. Multiple officers. Uh... Uh, in the immediate vicinity when this incident started. So there's a very short timeline of violence. It's unclear if the suspect acted alone, but police believe there is no remaining threat to the public. This is a very tragic incident, and we're doing every, everything we can to investigate it and try to identify the motivation behind this. Authorities are in the process of identifying the shooter and the victims. No officers were hurt, and the FBI is assisting Dayton, Ohio police right now. We're also tracking another mass shooting in El Paso, Texas. It happened just hours before the incident in Ohio. 20 people were shot and killed at a Walmart. Police say the suspect was taken into custody without incident. Right now, this is being treated as a hate crime or domestic terrorist investigation. Authorities stayed on the scene well into the night. Meanwhile, the El Paso community came together for this candlelight vigil, honoring the lives lost and the dozens others who were injured. The last thing people remember is um, the, the strength and the unity um, and the sense of family that we have as El Pasoans. But for some families, questions remain as to whether or not their loved ones are among the survivors. My brother called her and she said, I'm in the checkout. And I'll be home in 10 minutes. My brothers and sisters have been calling all day long. This is not right. 
Coming up at 6.30, we're going to hear from a Rhode Island native who was just moments away from the El Paso shooting. In the meantime, these are both developing stories here in El Paso and in Dayton. We're going to keep you updated on both on air and online at WPRI.com and the WPRI 12 News app. From the Control Room, I'm Kate Wilkinson, Eyewitness News.